Hello, you're watching Shalom World News. I'm Katie Asko from Dublin, Ireland, and these are your latest headlines from around the world. In Myanmar, a Catholic cathedral has been damaged by heavy shelling for the second time in five months. The Cathedral of the Sacred Heart of Jesus in the Diocese of Pekon in Shan State was hit on November 9th as fighting between government troops and ethnic militia intensifies. According to reports, there were no casualties, but windows and pews were damaged. Three days earlier, a nearby convent also endured artillery fire. Thankfully, the nuns escaped unhurt. More than 10,000 people from Pecan Town have been displaced because of the intense fighting between the military and the combined forces of the Karani Army and Karani People's Defence Force. Pecan Diocese is one of the worst affected areas. Catholic priests in the Diocese of Lincoln in the U.S. state of Nebraska will fast and pray today, November 12th, in atonement for the clerical sexual abuses that have taken place since the 1930s. Bishop James Connolly said that today will be observed as a day of fasting and abstinence and reparation for their offences that were highlighted in the report of the Nebraska Attorney General's office. Last week, Attorney General Doug Peterson released a report in which he expressed frustration over the fact that no accused priests would be prosecuted. In some cases, the offenders are either deceased or their whereabouts unknown. The Coptic Orthodox Church in Egypt has joined hands with the Muslim community to commemorate the 10th anniversary of the founding of the House of the Egyptian Family. The 10th anniversary of the organization, which fosters interreligious dialogue and peace, was celebrated with the motto 10 years of love, cooperation and brotherhood. Patriarch of the Coptic Orthodox Church, His Beatitude Tavadros II and Sheikh Ahmed al Tayeb, Grand Imam of Al Azhar University, took part in the commemorative event on Monday, November 8th. Several bishops, journalists, politicians and Muslim leaders attended the event. The Egyptian home was established to prevent sectarian violence and over the past decade has created a network of local communities to promote dialogue and coexistence. The former bishop of the Diocese of Arda and Clamacnoise in Ireland, the Most Reverend Francis Duffy, has been appointed as the new Archbishop of Tume. He succeeds Archbishop Michael Neary, who served the Archdiocese for almost three decades and was the longest serving prelate in Ireland. During his installation mass on Wednesday, November 10th, Archbishop Duffy thanked his predecessor and said he follows in the footsteps of a true shepherd who led the diocese with wisdom. Archbishop Duffy, who was originally from County Cavan, was ordained a priest in 1982. In 2013, he became Bishop of Arda and Clamagnois Diocese, where he has remained until his recent appointment. The Catholic Church in South Korea has paid homage to Cardinal Nicholas Cheon Jin Suk, who died earlier this year, by forming a Missionary Scholarship Foundation. The Nicholas Cheon Missionary Scholarship Foundation will enable lay people to respond to the call to proclaim the gospel. The foundation will provide scholarships for 10 years until 2031, the year of the centenary of the birth of the late Cardinal. A commission will examine each application and scholarships will be awarded on December 6th, the Feast of St. Nicholas. The foundation will also establish a support centre to promote Catholic arts. The Catholic Bishops' Conference of England and Wales and the Metropolitan Police have joined in forming a group to assess the role of Catholic priests in administering last rites at crime scenes in the UK. Cardinal Vincent Nichols of Westminster Archdiocese and President of the Episcopal Body and the Metropolitan Police Commissioner Cressida Dick have agreed to work together to establish the group and conduct study. The review follows public outcry after police officers refused to allow a Catholic priest to administer the anointing of the sick to British Catholic parliamentarian Sir David Amos, who was repeatedly stabbed on October 15th. Meanwhile, lawmakers have formally presented the Amos Amendment to ensure that Catholic priests can administer last rites at crime scenes in the UK. After the historic apostolic visit of Pope Francis to Iraq in March, Christians in the war-torn nation are seeing signs of revival. Inspired by the Pope's message to hope for a better future, Chaldean Patriarch Cardinal Louis Raphael Sacco has called on youth to participate in a gathering in the Iraqi capital of Baghdad from November 18th to 20th. The motto of the gathering, called Youth Movement, is You Are a Living Church which is taken from the homily of His Holiness during the liturgical service in the Chaldean Cathedral of St. Joseph. As the youth are the future of the nation, the Patriarch hopes that at least 400 boys and girls from Baghdad and other Chaldean dioceses across the country will take part in the event. Its highlights will be liturgy, prayer sessions, debates and networking opportunities. There will also be a catechetical conference hosted by Cardinal Sacco. 
Shortly after the arrest of seven Salesian missionaries by federal troops in Ethiopia, 16 United Nations employees have been detained in the capital Addis Ababa. Although reasons for the detention are unknown, there are reports of widespread arrests of ethnic Tigrayans as the government has stepped up its offensive against Tigray separatists. While the ethnicities of detainees are not yet clear, some reports say they are all Tigrayan. The detention comes under a recently imposed state of emergency by the government. UN spokesperson Stéphane Duyarich has said that they are working with the Ethiopian government to ensure the release of the UN staffers. Those are your latest headlines. Do join us tomorrow and visit swnews.org for more updates. Shalom.